thank you for watching my debate summary, review, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> there was a debate between Kent Hovind and Adam Heap. The subject was common designer versus a common ancestor. Adam Heap uh, started off, he talked about snakes, he talked about lizard feet. He pointed out that the chameleon has five claws but only two toes. Um, then it was Kent Hovind's turn for Kent Hovind's opening point. Uh, Kent pointed out that the even if Adam Heap was true and correct about snakes losing legs and once having had legs, that's losing something. But the religion of evolutionism teaches all life has one common ancestor that was a single cell organism. So it needed to gain something. You need proof of gaining of, you know, whole new body parts, functioning body parts happening. And, of course, that doesn't... <laughs> losing is not that. Um, Ken Hoven pointed out that bad design is still not proof of a lack of designer. <clears throat> um, and... In the past, Kent Hovind pointed out there was, I think he said Porsche was a brand of car. There was a car company that made a car that the way everything was designed, you had to completely take the engine out of the car to get to the spark plugs to replace the spark plugs. Well, that was a bad design. But if bad design proves no designer, then that means there was no factory for that car or no people building it. Well, of course not. The car was made by people. It wasn't a, a lightning did not strike a rich iron ore deposit in the middle of a jungle growing next to a rubber tree, and boom, there you had that car. Um, Kent Hovind pointed out that in 1905, there was an encyclopedia, I think he said, some writing that listed 180 vestigial organs. <coughs> Those organs weren't vestigial, people didn't understand what they did, and many or most of those have now been proven to have some function and do something. <sighs> Let's see, then it was Adam Heap's turn. He talked about Hondas and tanks and fish and octopus. His point was that point didn't make much sense, but a Honda couldn't turn into a tank or something like that. And fish and octopus, they're very different, so that couldn't have been designed or it was a bad designer or something like that. Um, he asked the question about why do not all snakes have claws? His claim was, well, that proves they evolved because, in, you know, some of them evolved without the claws or evolved and lost the claws. Weak point. No, that's that's even too generous to describe this point. He uh, he claimed the differences between different snakes proves evolution. There's no other way they could be there. <laughs> Kent Hovind made a list of different things he's built throughout his lifetime. Apparently he's very handy. Um, and the different differences in the animals does not prove a different, you know, uh, designer or that there were, was no designer. Just like the different things that Kent bent, built that were different doesn't prove they randomly evolved or came by random chance. A designer or a creator can create different things. Um, okay, then they had the dialogue section of the debate. Um, somehow the subject of mini cars, the brand of cars was brought up. And they're still around since the 1960s. That just means they were a good design or something like that. But Ken pointed that out. That doesn't mean that they evolved. Um, Ken asked for an example of something that gives a new kind of... An, uh, an example of a new kind of animal coming from an animal. Because that's what evolutionism teaches. So if you have proof of it and it's not just a belief, there, you should be able to show us that. 
And uh, Adam Heap uh, talked about a fossilized snake that's been found that had legs. Kent Hovind pointed out that just shows extinction. That does not show that you can get new things coming out of, you know. And. Uh, let's see. Adam Heap confused didn't have kids' population. Okay, then they talked about how what can you learn from the bones? Um, you don't know if a bone in the ground had kids or not. And you definitely can't claim proof that the bone in the ground gave birth to something different, which is what evolutionism teaches. It doesn't teach it instantly, and Kent doesn't say it teaches it instantly. But eventually, there's a difference. A whole different kind of animal. And if you're claiming scientific evidence, you should be able to show all of it. <clears throat> Adam Heap claimed, no, populations evolve, not individuals. That's stupid. No. How does a population evolve? Well, an individual in a population has to do something. It's like the population in Chicago commits murder. Well, yeah, true. There's a higher percentage of murders in Chicago per person than in some other places. But... Did those murders happen because of the population, or did individual people in Chicago do the murders? No, individual people did the murders. Like, when there's been wars, and one army won a battle, conquered, killed so many of the other army, did the whole army do it and there weren't individual soldiers? No, the individual soldiers did it, who were part of the army, but individuals have to do things. <clears throat> Let's see, just, uh, can't do all things evolve at the same time? Um, Adam Heap claimed you can't make a phylogenetic tree of cars, but you can of cobras. No, that's stupid. That's a bad statement on his part. The reason they make phylogenetic trees of the different animals is they find similarities. Well, you can make a phylogenetic tree of anything with similarities if the reason you draw on the line on paper between, I know, a human and a chimpanzee, and a never, ever seen or found, not even one bone, of a common ancestor. If you're drawing those lines because of similarities, then you can draw lines on paper between, you know, a, uh, a car and a motorcycle, because there are similarities. <clears throat> Okay, Adam Heap accused Kent Hovind of not understanding. Kent Hovind does not understand some things. He does not understand my religion. He does not understand some other religions. He does not understand the Bible, <clears throat> or at least accurately. <laughs> um, but I gotta, you know, stand up for the truth here. Adam Heap, by making a false accusation against Kent Hovind, has given me, me an opportunity to do good to those who despitefully use me and uh, persecute me. Well, there's people that do worse things than Kent Hovind does, but Kent Hovind lied about my religion and accused me because of what my religion is of some crazy stuff. <clears throat> but... Kent Hovind does understand how phylogenetic trees are put together and why the trees are drawn the way they are. Um, so Adam Heap uh, was very disturbed at Kent Hovind saying a phylogenetic tree is just lines on paper and not proof of anything. He bragged about how he spent a whole year putting together the phylogenetic tree that was on display um, on the screen during this debate. Um, and Ken Hovind never said that. Nobody did any research to make these trees. Ken Hovind is saying that people are making assumptions that are unprovable about the evidence. Assumptions that, well, there are other possibilities that they are not taking into consideration which are equally valid or arguably more valid. Um, yeah. Oh. And uh, Adam Heap accused Kent Hovind of um, a 
accused of committing a fraud with his phylogenetic tree. Kent Hovind did not accuse them of committing a fraud. There are similarities between snakes. Kent Hovind is just saying it doesn't mean they had a common ancestor. And even if the snakes had a common ancestor, Kent is open to the idea that speciation happens. So maybe there was a very small number of snakes in the past, but that's where that phylogenetic tree ends, and it does not reach back to a common ancestor with all animals. <clears throat> Kent didn't make that point clearly here, but I've seen him make it in other places. Kent is not against the concept of speciation. Kent does not say that the Bible disproves speciation, <clears throat> which is also called microevolution. <clears throat> but what Kent Hovind is saying, the phylogenetic trees are, is creative writing. See, there's a big difference between fraud and creative writing. <clears throat> Kent Hovind asks the question, it's obvious that uh, Adam Heap is starting with the assumption about evolution being true and looking at all the evidence that way. But why not assume a creator? <clears throat> and Kent Hovind pointed out that Adam Heap is not the first one to make a chart, and that does not, a chart is really, really weak proof, if, if you could even be that generous. <clears throat> Adam Heap said, if I'm committing fraud, why don't you call, call my degree? Call my university that gave me my degree and get my degree revoked. Sorry, I was not an exact impersonation, but he was getting very emotional. He had more of a British accent when he said that. But he was very emotional, arguably on the verge of crying when he said that. Kent Hovind does not do that. Call and get people's degrees revoked. He really did spend time getting that degree, so why, why hassle with that? Maybe that's what Kent Hovind's thinking. Maybe Kent Hovind has more important things to do with his life than call degrees and say, you should revoke so-and-so's degree because he said something stupid. <sighs> okay, Adam Heap said, were coyotes ever not coyotes? <sighs> Ooh. And he destroyed a straw man because Kent Hovind is not against speciation. A coyote in the past, their ancestors a few hundred or a few thousand years ago not being noticeable and recognizable as coyotes, would not at all disprove what Kent Hovind believes or what I'm convinced of about the scientific evidence. <clears throat> because the Bible says things will bring forth after their kind, which leaves open the possibility of speciation. <clears throat> um... You know, um, our current classification system was not created by God at the same time the Bible was made. So it's hard to pin down where all of the kinds, you know, where, they, uh, where all the kinds begin. Maybe it's genus level, maybe it's a family level. <clears throat> but if coyotes in the past were still dog or wolfish, then Kent Hovind is validated. You're not disproving Kent Hovind saying that coyotes do not have a common ancestor with a watermelon by proving that coyotes used to be more like wolves and less like coyotes, because wolves and coyotes can interbreed. Um, that's why the coyotes in the east are bigger than the coyotes in the west. <clears throat> People were eradicating wolves, coyotes moved into the area, and they were feeling like mating. And wolves and coyotes are the same kind of animal. They are so similar, they can mate and create viable offspring, causing the eastern coyotes of the United States of America to be significantly bigger than the western coyotes of the United States of America. <clears throat> All right. Um, Kent Hoban talks about common sense. He uses that word, common sense a lot, and Adam Heap said, it would not be common sense to say I could go west from London and get to London. Yes, so that was a weak argument. Yes, it is. <clears throat> Adam, um, <clears throat> Adam Heap said something like, let's see, best extra benefit. Okay, he was asked about the best 
uh, example of a beneficial mutation he could come up with. And he came up with the spitting cobra. Even if the spitting cobra's ancestors were snakes that did not spit, that does not disprove Kent Hovind. But that's not a, whole, a new lung or a, a fur where there was no fur. It's not a big enough change to say, see, that proves snakes have a common ancestor with dogs. Okay, uh, Kent Hovind in the Q&A section, they had a very small Q&A section. Very small. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad, but it's a fact. A lot of times in debates, there's, you know, 10, 20 minutes, a half an hour of Q&A. There was, like, enough Q&A for, like, a couple of questions. That was it. But somebody was asked about, uh, <clears throat> mistakes and, uh, people not being able to create their own vitamin C. Because there are animals that create their own vitamin C. Bears are an example of that. Bears create their own vitamin C. Kent Hovind pointed out that that would be... Let's see, if we used to be able to, if the genes are in us to make vitamin C and we don't, that means things are breaking down and getting worse, not getting better. That's not something new. Man, man lost vitamin C creation. All right, so those are my thoughts on this debate where Adam Heap, wow, he didn't prove anything. All he proved is he can have some really strong beliefs and no clue about what proof means. Wow. Adam Heap brought up a whole bunch of differences, and he assumed that that means common ancestor. And he acted like his assumption was proof, which it isn't. A designer can create things however the designer wants. That's why... There are a whole lot of similarities between a uh, Toyota Corolla SE and SX and a Ford F-150 and a Ford F-150 XL, or whatever the model names are. <laughs> Thank you for watching. You have a good day.